Hey everyone, welcome back to Big Boy. I thought I would give a, a quick overview of the CSS system from Compass Games. It's the rebirthing by Adam Starkweather Stark Stark of uh, his GTS system. So obviously that is staying with MMP and they're continuing to do their thing with it. And he has written a new system. And that new system uh, has two or three different modules out already, all focused on the, uh, the Pacific War, for which I have uh, mostly zero interest in as a, I mean, waiting for something else to come out that was in the European theater or the Eastern Front <clears throat> or somewhere, right? Uh, and something that didn't involve an island invasion and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, I found the GTS landing exercise fascinating one time never need to do that again uh, i would love to see in fact uh, any game that does uh, amphibious landings to uh, provide you the opportunity to start from the historical post landing turn so that you don't have to go through the landings because some people just don't want to do that all right anyway let's carry on with our conversation and this is a, this is an interesting system and very similar yet different from GTS. And um, unfortunately, uh, you're gonna have to deal with me contra comparing and contrasting it to GTS, the Grand Tactical System. And if you don't know it, then some of this might fall on deaf ears and this probably is not the video for you. And you might wanna just punch the skip button and uh, toddle off to watch something else on someone else's channel or whatever it may be. But, uh, you know, and the other, the other groovy thing, is I can't actually pronounce the name of the, the game, right? Because if I say it, I know someone's gonna correct me. So this is the name of the game. <coughs> and really uh, a fascinating conflict to have a look at. So it's post-invasion down in the, you know, the south of France. And uh, General Truscott, who is uh, someone who I've actually read a fair amount about, he was involved in a number of landings, uh, including the first uh, on the coast of Africa, and then uh, Sicily, and then later uh, at Anzio too, I believe, or perhaps the second landing uh, after Anzio. And then of course this, uh, this particular thing. Now there's no landing in this, so that's the good news. Uh, it's, it's really a uh, task force butler uh, racing to try and cut off the Germans as they're looking to escape north. And that, that kind of sets the, the, the general stage. It's about an eight day, I think it's eight day campaign. So from the 20th or 21st of the month through to the 28th or thereabouts. And the campaign game looks really fascinating. Today, we had an opportunity to play uh, a kind of funnily named scenario. And I, so uh, we played scenario five, which is uh, trying to get uh, one division up the road and off the map, basically, and in, to reflect that, you have, uh, you're basically facing off, it's a, it's a division versus basically a regiment or thereabouts, a few, a few additional added forces. Uh, and that on the left-hand side of the map, as you're looking north, there's a rail line, and the Germans are need, need to capture that rail line. And on the right-hand side, there are some victory point hexes that are scattered around that are worth lots to the Germans and less to the, to the Americans. And in the middle left-hand side of the map, there is a section of uh, hexes that are valuable to the Americans, but not as valuable to the Germans. And so uh, the, the game has is chip pull mechanic and by division and by formation. And it is... Uh, pretty clean and pretty straightforward there. So it's very, very similar. And I'm gonna go into a few of the nuances and differences in a second. And then uh, assault and fire and all the rest of it all feel very familiar at first glance. Uh, now, after playing this opposed, we, we, we did, uh, like I said, five turns, I think it was. Each turn's about two hours, right, uh, of, of game time. And it took us, um, sorry, uh, yeah, in game time. And it took us probably including lunch, probably three hours or three and a quarter hours, something like that, to kind of get through the, the situation and get to a, a stopping point. 
so I got a couple of issues with that specific scenario, but we were really playing it not to not to win and not to do any of that sort of stuff, just to play the system and see where the differences were. My buddy's a big GTS fan and um, and, and but recognizes it's watts, right? So so here we so here we go. Let's talk let's talk about perhaps from general principles where where is is CSS better and and why, and maybe some of, of the why. Uh, it's a now this is single single page, so it's it's not back not back printed, right? So it's a it's a big rule book, uh, but it's probably forty pages, so it's very man it's consumable, right? But it's still that wordy style, right? so that's very similar to GTS. <clears throat> but what is you know, very very good, right? Excellent is that uh, the map art is fantastic. The counter art is cleaned up and refined. There are way less numbers on the counters, so it's, uh, it's not this uh, polka dot uh, kaleidoscope of um, <laughs> numbers and colors on the counters as you try and work out what the hell everybody's got and what they're doing and what they can and can't do. Uh, the the uh, the scenario layout and the scenario setup is much cleaner and more effective. Excuse me, more effective and efficient. The charts, yeah, you know, the charts are okay. Uh, although I will now say that you can put uh, multiple divisions on one chart, which is fantastic. Uh, so you have less acreage required for the, for these games. And overall, if I were just to, if I were going to net this out, so you can stop at eight minutes. If you want, uh, the game plays cleaner, faster, but with the same level of fidelity as GTS. Uh, so for all the GTS aficionados, you would pick this rule book up, not a problem, and move straight on into this and appreciate the, the, the some of the subtleties that are going into the, the game to make it cleaner and easier to play. And a couple of examples of that uh, how uh, command chits are handled and how they're rolled for. There's none of this, uh, and, and how, how chits are handled in general, so you don't keep the last chit. You play all the chits in the cup, right? Just play all the chits in the cup. Uh, you are uh, rolling, and, and you want to place an assault chit. You've got to spend dispatch points, which are really hard to come by, so you've really got to know where you want to attack and, and how you want to attack. And you're kind of declaring that to the enemy as well. So now that becomes a focal point of the battlefield and things can sort of mushroom uh, out from there. So the gets, like I said, so the game plays cleaner and faster. Now, the uh, with all of that, there are changes. Uh, I think firepower, fire combat is, is much the same, but just simplify. We did lots of shooting, lots of artillery and lots of assaults. We, uh, we got into the uh, maneuver aspects. You don't have to worry about being, being put in column markers on stuff anymore. You flip the unit over, it's in column mode. There's a penalty for it. There's no, oh, I've got to be in column mode to go through a town or a village or whatever. You're all pretty much always in column mode and you're not really able, you're not really able to move unless you are in column mode. You've got to be in column mode to, uh, to assault, but you, you can move up to the enemy Use a second action, flip over, out of column mode. Then when your formation activates again, you can you know do fire actions and all that sort of stuff. One of the nice uh, little cleanups there is that you can also, you can do the same action twice if you want to spend a command point to do that. Uh, so you can uh, fire, fire, move, move, fire, move, move, fire, whatever it may be. You can rally, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's got all of that, uh, all of that sort of, little nuancey bits and pieces you had to keep track of and have a chart and a special thing or what can I do, what can I do? You don't really need any of that. It's all cleaned up. Um, nice stuff. Assaults. You put an assault marker down and that's where your units are going to attack at some point, either when you're next activated or when you are uh, on the next turn and when you're activated. So, there's a tendency there to, as the defender, then to like start laying barrages on units and messing people up with, with their uh, sort of prep fires before they start to do their assault. But the whole 
exercise of taking damage in the assault and taking damage when you're fired upon is really straightforward. You basically, in an assault, you, uh, you will suffer opportunity fire. There's no TQ checks beforehand. You'll, uh, because you're, you're prepping this thing up, right? So you, you, you put the marker down and then the next activation you're going in. So everyone's going in. So just that is what it is. And then uh, there's up fire, obviously. Then you calculate the odds. You uh, look for various uh, modifiers. Both sides are rolling a die. And then you take the, the modifiers for each, uh, each side's uh, DRMs. The net difference is going to be the loss is taken by one side or the other. And that's it. And then you either capture the hex or don't capture the hex. I've, I found myself massing using artillery to try and kill units, suppress them and then kill them with a small arms fire up close, and then just move into the hex. And the, the, uh, I, my opponent reciprocated by doing the same thing to me. Uh, very heavily. He, he's picking up VPs for killing units, so everyone counts. So he, so he was he was dead set on knocking guys out. I'm kind of meandering around here a little bit. I apologize for that. But uh, barrages. Oh, so barrages are interesting because one thing that was a little curious is that the barrage counter stays on the map until the smoke, that's uh, until the wind counter is pulled. And the wind counter clears all the smoke, clears all of the barrage counters on the board, and that's it. Now that could happen at the very first chip pull or the very last chip pull. And depending on when it happens, that's gonna impact all of your choices and actions that you might conduct. GTS and, and, and CSS, that you, you wanna put stuff on a barrage markers because it, it degrades their ability to fire. And that's why it's important and affects their TQ rate. So there's little things like that are the difference and it takes a little getting used to and a little nuance there and uh, I, I find it all fascinating and interesting and I'll just say this, that we had a, we had a lot of fun and I'm sorry it took 14 minutes to get to the point that, to say that I had a lot of fun. But there are a couple of things that I did want to bring up that I think are, are worth noting that uh, we should have a, a quick, either not a conversation about but just make note of. Uh, the, wind, the wind marker thing was the first one. I, I don't know how I feel about that yet. That's a great game changer and it's, it's nature. So maybe this valley or this area we're fighting in, that's what it was like. So, okay, that is what it is. That time of year, super windy. Who knew? Uh, I, th there's this ability with engineers to, uh, for the allies to make trenches, to go from foxholes uh, to trenches. And you've got to do a TQ rating role. Why? Uh, why, why wouldn't you just either just you know, put a construction marker on them and then next turn they're built? Why try to roll underneath the TQ rating? It seems kind of stupid. It doesn't attach. It doesn't. It's not attached to me anyway. It's not attached to the activity. My morale has nothing to do with how well I dig. Anyway, this is an interesting. Interesting thing. So I think we're going to check. We may. We may well change that. Oh, and so this was fascinating. The two two last things. The TQ rating can change over time and goes down really hard to get back up. And in fact, once it does go down to I think it's three or two of these random events that can reduce your, your TQ rating, you're kind of screwed. That means you're playing the game with just the infantry division chit because you can't put formation markers into the cup because you something like that. I forget exactly what it is now, I, now that I'm thinking about it. But trust me, when the TQ rating goes down, it's not good and it will clean out the chits and you'll have the win chit, the random events chit, and the two, uh, the two divisional chits in there, and that's about it. Uh, which kind of brings me to uh, the random events table that I really struggled with in the smaller scenarios. They really have a massive impact on the smaller scenarios. I would probably encourage some of the events that occur, i.e. a reduction on either side's TQ rating to be a one-time event. And then they're currently not as stated in the rule book. It, you can lose all of your TQ uh, and down to zero, as far as I can tell, uh, based on the way the word, it's worded today. So that seems like it's either a problem or it's wrong. Uh, so there's that. And then the campaign, uh, I'm very curious about the campaign setup. We were looking at it because we're, we're gonna set that up in uh, September, October. Or maybe in August, actually. I'm not sure. But I think August. So, Task Force Butler comes on the first day, and it's the only formation on the board for eight or ten turns. 
and you you get to choose where you want to you know move to and set up and sort of that's where you're going to be the the blocking force right i just find this it is incongruous why can't we just either give me the historical where were they where did they set up i guess i can go read that myself or uh you know, just let me put the dudes down where where they are, where they can go within reason, within, you know, wherever they were able to get to historically, and let me put them down rather than me move them by myself for 10 turns. That seems kind of goofy. Unless you're looking to build up a bank of dis- dispatch points and command points or something like that. I don't, I don't understand. So that seemed really strange. And then because the, the first enemy unit doesn't enter the map, until that night of the first day, which is, the, I believe, is the 20th, the 21st. Uh, so, this, you know, so the elements of 21st Panzer, or I think it is, come onto the board that night. Wow. So w- what are you doing? So if you've got four guys trying to play this game, trying to play the campaign game, everybody is waiting around for however long it takes you to, to roll through the dice of, of dicing out 10 turns. That really seems kind of bizarre to me and I don't understand why that's that way. So uh, that was a kind of a bit of a red flag for us. Uh, I found the scenario we played, scenario five, to be a huge stretch for the Germans to, to make any headway whatsoever. But we're playing with a new system. I'm not really sure I understand all the nuances of it yet. So I'll reserve criticism of whether or not it's a good or bad scenario, as the case may be, to uh, to uh, further play, right? So I give it a big thumbs up from an initial play. I would say it's more approachable and easier to play than GTS. I would say that it's more refined than GTS. I- I'm not a huge fan of the rule book. Uh, while I like the layout, I- I'm not. It's a very, very wordy book to kind of grok you've got to read through these sentences and there's a few oh by the way don't forget type of things and there's a lot of stuff repeated uh, uh, as well so other than that i think i think it might be a winner and if we can see some one or two map games but if i want to play it solo you know i'm really and i want the full campaign experience i don't want to have to run around and and do exactly the same thing over and over and over in a repetitive fashion which brings me to a quick point before I wrap up. I think it's really, really interesting that, uh, that these refinements have happened because it's good. It's really good for the system as a whole. And it allows a speed of play to occur and a cadence of play to occur that is faster and better. Uh, this is what I'm thinking. And it allows you to take a monster scale game and play it without digging down into the minutia, like with uh, the TSWW or the old Europa system, and you know doing two fifths of this and one fifth of that, and measuring and counting and hunt of uh, factor hunting and all the rest of it. You're down in playing the game and you're rock and rolling and you're getting through activations pretty quickly, and that's pretty cool. That means you can kind of get a feel for this big campaign. In a, in, a, in a relatively decent space of time. It's a monster, so that's, it is what it is, right? So we've got to kind of accept that. But uh, I, I found it to be enjoyable and brisk in its play. Anyway, that's probably enough. I've kind of waffled on here a lot, but it's good catching up with you guys. Montelimar, is that what it's called? I don't know. Anyway, it's good, it's good fun.